five, four, three, two, one, go. I'm Zach Rumko. I'm a senior at Stevens. So tell us about the Rubik's Cube. What do you like about it? What grabbed you about it? Sure. So what I really like about it is it displays uh, the same sort of algorithmic thinking that goes into general problem solving. And that's exactly what uh, you use when you're solving to align the colors properly. So it's a lot of fun and a good test as well. So you learn how to do it as a kid. When did you first start thinking about building a robot to, to solve the, the cube for you? About a year ago, I saw a video of the world record bot, and I noticed that it only had four arms and two cameras, so I saw some immediate uh, places for improvement, and uh, as soon as I ordered the motor, saw how fast it was, I knew that I had a chance, so that's when I started to go for it. This machine behind you, is that close to what you had originally envisioned? Yes, it is almost exactly what I originally envisioned, actually. It's, wow. uh, so, so tell us about this moment. Did it come to you in a dream, or was it an analytical decision? Or? It was certainly an analytical decision. In fact, my original goal was for it to be faster than me, but I didn't decide that I was actually going to build it until I got one motor and saw that it could theoretically beat the world record. So, well, okay. Um, and, and what makes your machine different? How is it faster than other machines like it? So the two important points are that it has six arms, which means I can turn any face at any time, and it has two cameras, which means it can scan the whole cube at once. That's it. And that's it. Tell us, uh, when's the first time you recorded a, a world record speed? What was that like? That was incredible, actually. Up until that point, it had just been destroying my cubes, trying to turn the size at a long time. Wait, wait, destroying cubes? That sounds interesting. Describe that. So what happens is that it would misalign one of the layers and try to turn one of the adjacent ones, and the pieces would fly out all over the room, making me go pick them up and reassemble it. Right. And the first time that it worked, it was actually a world record time because I had been pushing it as fast as it could go already. So it was awfully... Uh, relieving as well. So, so what did you do? Set the scene. You're at home, you're working. Where are you working? I was working probably around 1 o'clock in the morning in my bedroom, just running it over and over again, adjusting the screws here and there. And uh, finally I got one that worked. So when it worked, what do you do? You run down the street? What do you do? I called my grandfather actually to let him know the good news. And I'm not sure that he believed me at first actually. He uh, hung up on me at first. I had to <laughs> call him back. And I guess at that point he believed that it was real, congratulated me, and uh, shipped the whole family over the next day to come see it. So. Okay, cool. Tomas? Cool. And, oh, ex I'll kind of explain how, your, how the machine's going to work today. Sure. So first of all, it uses two cameras, and it uses those two pictures that it takes with the cameras to knit together a three-dimensional image of the cube. Then it works back what position the cube is in and how to solve it. And finally, it sends the signals to each of the motors to make all the turns that it needs to. So, do you program any, or what, what did you program to do make that happen? How did you? So, so I. So, so we're, we're question. I actually began with the uh, visual processing algorithm, and so that itself was probably around five pages of code. And uh, after that, I started programming uh, the code that it needed to actually find a solution, because originally it was actually just uh, a way to tell me how to solve it faster. And after that, I started construction. So.